Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, today is going to be a little bit different um, because I want to talk to you a little bit about what we want to do with this uh, video series. As you know, we're we're starting to transition back into um, live services, live discipleship meetings, uh, and small groups and things of that matter. So today I just wanted to talk to you all about a couple of things. I want to share a reflection with us from Scripture, as we always do, but I also want to talk about what we're going to do with this Wednesday night uh, or, or we, this weekly video series uh, that we've been doing during the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So let's just jump into it. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just share uh, this reflection with you from Hebrews. This is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And really I've been reflecting on this, this today and, and thinking of ways we can do just that. Um, how can we continue to hold on to the hope that we profess and practice our, our hope in, in real life and spread the hope around uh, and share what, what makes this hope that we have worth it and this faith that we have worth it and the love that we share uh, worth giving. Um, and so I wanted to, to share this and, and uh, share this reminder to that God has reminded us and reminded me today that we should spur one another on uh, toward love and good deeds, uh, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit here in a minute about ways that I want to do just uh, do this, uh, spur you on uh, toward love and good deeds in your spiritual journey and in your spiritual life uh, through this video series, through the engagements that we have online. Um, but I want to just reiterate my point from last week. We talked about discipling our children. Um, I think that that uh, that's in, that is a centrally important part of being a Christian is is instructing the uh, generations to come in in, in um, their faith development. But I also think that that is something we share for those in our own generations and those uh, those around us for all of our families, for our husbands and for our wives for uh, um, for our mothers and fathers, for, for our friends and coworkers, we, we spur one another on toward love and good deeds. That means that we, um, we're always in conversation with one another. We're always um, growing together toward what God is wanting us to become, always on a journey, not alone, uh, but together. And so this, this reminds us we should be about the habit of getting together. Now, I understand, and I know, as you do, that that's kind of odd, uh, an odd verse to read right now, because we, we can't always meet together in the ways that we, uh, we are accustomed because of this pandemic, but we should still get in the habit of meeting together in some way, in whatever way we can. Um, that includes uh, sending a text message to someone you haven't seen in a while, uh, or calling them, uh, Skyping them, calling them on Zoom, uh, however, um, you know, messaging them on Facebook, however, we have a means of getting together, especially in this time and in this season where it seems like so many people are driving one another apart. 
the church should be about the habit of bringing one another together. That doesn't mean that when we come together, we just, it's just kumbaya, we don't touch on real subjects and we don't uh, talk about the issues at hand. We are talking about those things. We should continue that conversation and do so in the context of spurring one another on toward love and good deeds and do so with the, um, with the drive to encourage one another, encourage one another, not just to affirm, uh, you know, and support whatever somebody else is doing, even if they're doing the wrong thing, we're just supporting one another and encourage and an encouragement of one another. That's not what the writer of Hebrews is saying. The encouragement that we bring to one another as we meet together and discuss together and live life together as Christians is not one of simply emotional support, though it is that. Well, we are an emotional support to one another, but also a faithful support to one another, uh, lifting one another up toward Jesus, pointing one another up toward Jesus, pointing one another away and incur and discouraging one another um, in going the wrong way, and going away from Jesus. Um, and that cannot happen unless we are about the habit of coming together, of calling on one another, of answering the calls when, when those calls come through, um, of, of being vulnerable with one another. I know in this culture we don't um, often want to trust that the intentions of someone who is simply asking, how are you doing? What's been going on? Are you okay? Sometimes we have become so cynical that the, um, simply that people checking in on us, we think they got an agenda, we think they got some other thing planned, that, that their, their motivations are disingenuous. And that's simply uh, not something we should assume about one another. We should consider how we may spur one another on and be spurred on toward love and good deeds as we get together, especially in this time and in these days. So I want to encourage you to not give up on meeting one, with one another. Um, if you need help in how to connect with one another, with the new technologies out there, call me. Call somebody that you know that uh, is experienced in those things. I did a seminary degree on Zoom. I know how to do Zoom. If you are thinking you want to have a family dinner or a family get together through Zoom, I can help with that. Um, any way that I can be in of, this, of assistance to you as your pastor, um, please know that I'm here for that. But I just want to encourage you as I did last week, as I uh, talked about how we are uh, mandated by the scriptures and by the example of Jesus to disciple one another, to uh, disciple our, our children specifically, uh, the writer of Hebrews uh, reminds us that we are also to be discipled that we're also to disciple one another, um, even, though, even those of us who are of the same spiritual or physical age. So I want to ask um, and um, inspire us and, and hopefully motivate us to think about uh, two questions. Are you discipling someone? Is there someone in your life that you are pouring in time and effort to tell them, uh, to partner with them, to, to point them toward Jesus, point them away from the things that are not of God and point them toward God and toward love and good deeds? That's the first question. For many of the, us, that might be our kids. I would encourage you to th think about people in your church who might not have a parent, especially kids who may not have a parent who's pouring their life or pouring their spiritual life into their children. Think especially of people who might not have that mentorship and those people discipling them and leading them in that way. 
Are you discipling somebody? And the second question is, are you being discipled? And I think that um, I can tell you as pastor, as a pastor and uh, among other pastors, that's a question I need to ask. And I need to, to seriously consider, um, am I being discipled by someone? Am I allowing somebody else to speak into my life in ways, in ways that will lead me closer to Jesus? For some, of, for some of us, that person that you think of maybe is me, maybe is another pastor, maybe it's your mom and your dad or your spiritual mom or dad. What, uh, however, um, we can connect with one another in this journey of faith together and spur one another on toward love and good deeds. We need to take the initiative to do so, especially in days when we are uh, less and less frequently physically together. I know that we're coming out of a lot of this, um, and hopefully we'll be out of this uh, entirely sooner than later, but I don't know that timeline. You don't know that timeline. Is somebody uh, discipling you? Are you allowing somebody and being vulnerable with somebody to, who is holding you spiritually accountable, who is somebody you can go to with spiritual questions? Or are you just trying to do this all yourself? Because let me stop the share here so I can just say this in the big screen. If you think you can pour into somebody else's life without being poured into, I don't know that that's possible. <laughs> I don't know that it's possible to give what we are not willing to receive. And yes, the Holy Spirit is involved in all of that and is, and is a necessary partner for making those things happen. Without God involved in the discipleship process, it is not discipleship and it is not possible. But God partners with you and me in leading his people to him. And if we are uh, biblically mandated to lead others toward Jesus, but we ourselves are not willing to let others lead us and uh, let others partner with us in our faith journey, then what are we giving to those that we disciple? And that's a convicting question. And it's one that, that is not uh, just a quick answer to. It takes a right person. It takes a spiritually mature person. And I know for many of us, that's a, that's a hard find, um, but, but it's a, a necessary search. Find someone that you can ask spiritual questions of who will take the time to hold you accountable, to lead you in the ways that you ought to go. At the same time, look to pour into others. Look to pour into others and leading them in the ways that you have been led. That doesn't mean that you need to be taught in a certain way or have some sort of level of understanding. If you have uh, received the call and have um, been following Jesus in the mission to love God and love others, then you can disciple. And if you are called to love God and love others, you're not supposed to do that alone. You can't love others without others. Let others in. Let others come alongside you. We are in this together. Don't get out of the habit of thinking that you are in this with others. Don't think that you're in this by yourself. Let's get together on this and spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Speaking of that, that's what I want this to be this uh, video series. I don't even know what really to call it. Um, we have the Sunday morning worship um, pretty much set. Uh, I know that we had some uh, technical difficulty Sunday, but we're working out the kinks in that. We're going to keep that going uh, as long into the future as we can, uh, just because it's, it's a good all-around uh, stopgap measure for anyone who is not able to be with us in person especially in these days. 
So we have that online uh, presence on Sunday. But with our other stuff, with the Wednesday, you know, we're going to probably get back together on Wednesday nights. Um, we're not going to do that uh, right now. We're going to do that may at least a month. Uh, we're going to wait to do that for at least a month, if not longer. Um, we're watching uh, the numbers and watching the, the increase of COVID cases in Oklahoma with great caution and with uh, you know, great prayerfulness, um, not wanting to start uh, major things. Um, we're going to put off doing any small group activities. That includes Sunday school and Wednesday night until at least July, if not longer, but eventually we're gonna start those things again. Um, so I wanna know, what you all think about what we should do with this. We have been doing two videos a week, uh, one on Sunday and then one for Wednesday as a sort of stopgap measure for our Wednesday night Bible study. But I don't really want to stop doing, doing discipleship material um, online because I know not everybody comes to Sunday school. Not everybody comes to Wednesday night. Uh, not everybody can or not everybody will. So I want to provide some sort of help for your spiritual journey uh, through this video series, through a sort of weekly, uh, weekly set of videos. Um, so I want to know, uh, just for our sake together, um, what you think, what would be the most helpful thing for you uh, in your spiritual journey? Um, let me know in the comments down below um, if, you know, what would be the most helpful thing um, for this YouTube channel uh, in, in leading you deeper in your faith and spurring you on to love and good deeds. We can keep doing a weekly reflection if that's most helpful. We can also, um, I know lots of people have trouble with how to engage in the Bible, especially if they have not engaged in it regularly before. Sometimes it can be a daunting task to read and engage with a large book, a large reference material type book like the Bible, um, and, and know exactly what to do and how to do it um, that is in, in a way that's going to be helpful uh, for leading you in your faith. Uh, so we can make this channel about how to read the Bible, how to read certain books of the Bible, what to expect when you open uh, and, and seek to do daily devotions like I'm encouraging you to do. Uh, we can also deal with theological issues um, about who God is, who Jesus is, um, how to pray, what prayer is, what, what communion and baptism and the church are things like that. Or simply, we can just field questions. You can ask me questions. I don't know how we would collect those questions. And we can just answer them uh, one by one randomly on these videos. Those are some things I've been mulling over, some things I've been considering. Um, but I want to hear from you. I really need to hear from you because I can, I can try to put something out there that I think would be helpful for you but only you know what you're wondering about. So I can do something that I think would be helpful for you. Um, but if I don't hear from you, then, then we're not in this together and not engaging in this conversation about what, what we need spiritually. Um, so what would be the most helpful thing? What are, what are you the most, what do you feel the most inadequate or most, um, you know, confused by what, what would be the most helpful thing for, for making your faith stronger and leading you toward Jesus. That's in, uh, in a sense, partially um, something that I want to, that, uh, well, let me rephrase that. That's something that I want to do and something I'm always thinking about uh, with these videos and with uh, these, with sermons and with things is, how can I speak to you? How can I facilitate the work 
of God's Spirit in your life. And that's what I want to do. But I know that God's been working in your life too. And so how, and how, uh, however God has been leading you and uh, teaching you and forming you, I want to continue that and encourage that and, and champion that with this video series and do whatever I can to help you grow closer to Christ. Um, that's, uh, that's all I want to say in this video, other than I have uh, one more thing to share with you that I'll be reminding us kind of at the end of these videos, probably for the rest of the summer. Um, and that is, uh, last year, we helped Briggs Public Schools. If you are familiar with where we're at, Briggs Public Schools is uh, just a few miles uh, down the highway from us. And so we, we decided last year we were going to help them with school supplies. We're going to do that again this year. Um, this is a list of their school supplies um, for uh, pre-K through, through fourth grade. I will try to make... Um, make both sides of this uh, uh, of this document available. The grades go from pre-K to eighth grade. Briggs has about 400 students uh, that the it distributes you know about 30 or 40 per grade. Um, we're going to help uh, Briggs in however way that we can. I understand um, and and just have to point out that I know that the coronavirus pandemic has brought financial constraints to families uh, everywhere. So if you are not financially capable of helping in this way, if you've got kids you've got to buy school supplies for, uh, you've you got to do those things, um, don't worry about this. Uh, don't think that you have to, uh, you have to go above your means. Um, but if you can help and if you can contribute to uh, helping collect school supplies for uh, the kids at, at Briggs Public Schools, um, we would love to have your help and love for, for you to do so. I know that there are some uh, folks watching that maybe don't live in Tahlequah or don't, um, don't go to our church, um, but this is our, our church's uh, mission for uh, for the summer in collecting uh, for these kids. So, because as I said, coronavirus has, has affected uh, a vast variety of, of families economically and emotionally. And this is a way that we can help our community in collecting school supplies for the coming year. Um, so there's kind of two ways you can do this. One, uh, one way is you could uh, as you can see with like pre-K, they have a list and a backpack is included on that list. You could get a backpack and fill that backpack up with all those things on that list and say, that's one pre-kindergartner who has all their supplies, even if they couldn't afford one glue stick. That's a, that's a kid that has all their supplies already. Um, you could also uh, just buy some of the things on this list um, and and bring you know if you want to just buy some pencils and bring them by the church you're free to do so um, but or, or just buy some scissors or just buy uh, you know the backpacks however you want to contribute you're free to do that in it whatever way that you can however you can uh, but you're invited to bring them uh, bring them by the church um, on Sundays especially if you're not able to come by personally, like, you know, you're not coming to service and stuff like that for health reasons, uh, just bring them by, uh, by the church uh, or by my house, by the church, and set them on the porch, and we'll get them, and we'll, we'll collect them, and uh, um, hopefully can help some kids uh, and some parents uh, relieve a burden. Uh, but thank you for joining us this evening. I hope that uh, that this has been helpful and informative, um, and I hope these videos have been inspirational for you in, during this time, and hope that they continue to be. But uh, please let me know what what uh, you want to see happen here, um, because I want this to be helpful for you. This is not just me. To, this is not just an opportunity for me to talk again. 
right? This is me, an opportunity for us to get together and, and be uh, drawn closer to God. So um, have a great night um, and we'll see you Sunday.